What else is new? Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, folks, we are live. Sorry for the delay for anyone who is watching this live. My name is Dr. Vibe, host and producer of the award-winning The Dr. Vibe Show, two-time Canadian Ethnic Media Association Award winner, but it is not a Dr. Vibe show tonight. It is Eminem Explorers, which is produced by the men and masculinity team consisting of Lee Rosen, consisting of Michelle, consisting of Terry, and consisting of Robert. Robert's here tonight. And love that you're here with us again this month. And uh, I've been looking forward to this conversation for a long time because during my journey of manhood, it's always important for me to gain mentorship. And uh, we have a special guest on tonight, Glenn Barker, formerly of the Mankind Project in Chicago. And for a long period of time, I was putting it out there, putting it out in the universe, as they say, that we could get himself and Robert Leung on together. And after some arm twisting, pushing and pulling, and saying, and, and I guess low line threats, I, I finally made it happen tonight. So we are very blessed. And I've been privileged to know Glenn Barker for, who? it's got to be at least five, six, seven years now. Uh, very committed and dedicated to manhood. And uh, so he is with us tonight. Glenn, how are you this evening? I'm great. I'm glad to be part of this. Yes, we've had conversations before. I feel like I already know Robert. We have so much in common. True. You know, Dr. Vibe, to his, well, we have done many things together. Um, I look forward to our contribution to hopefully help other men in this world uh, become stronger, more resilient, and, and feel better about how they're navigating this world. So thank you for inviting me. Pleasure and honor. And uh, Robert, how are we doing tonight? I'm always doing great when I'm on a call with you, Dr. Vibe, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be here in this, uh, in this group of men also. So I'm looking forward to a great conversation, as always. Uh, when I introduced this conversation topic to Lee, who's our program lead, um, the topic of our conversation tonight is, men, how do you know when you're triggered? And I was going to say to Lee, dot, 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 old school men's work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, for, so for men and those who love them, we're, gonna, we're probably going to go back a little old school men's work tonight. And uh, <laughs> There's not too many other men that I would like leading this conversation than Robert and Glenn, but I'm going to pass it over to Glenn and ask why did he want to talk about this subject at this time in the manhood journey? Well, thank you for that. And um, I, I agree with you. I think there are some basics when it comes to men's work that uh, are worthwhile revisiting. Uh, I myself find myself drifting past uh, the basics. And one of those things is, do you know when you get upset? And do you know where it arises? Do you know how it arises? Do you know the sequence of events that gets you caught up in your story, right? Or in some old pattern that before you know it, you are acting in ways that might be regrettable. And I think it's, especially these times, I found myself getting triggered uh, uh, by events of the world and other individuals and had that's why I brought that. I thought it's a men's work one on one, just like accountability or integrity or one of those. So I don't think there's probably a man or woman out there that hasn't been triggered uh, in the events of this last year that could say, if we were a little more conscious of that, if we understood ourselves a little bit, maybe we could avert some actions that we might later regret. And so uh, that's what the topic today is about. We're going to explore this with these men. Wonderful. Robert, when I brought this topic to you, and then in our uh, pre-live conversations. What were your thoughts on this conversation topic? My first thought was, um, how many men know when they're not triggered? <laughs> there I you think go. that I think that's a that's a bigger question because I think most of the time we're operating in in the state of being triggered all the time, and particularly with all the events that are going on now, politically and uh, civilly, and 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 certainly on an emotional level. Um, yeah. That, that, that is a much more critical question. I think we were operating in a state of, of high alert and are probably triggered most of the time now. Yeah, yeah. Right, good stuff. So Glenn, I'm gonna put it back to you and I know probably the first part of our conversation, you wanted to chat with us about the drama triangle. 
Right. So let's do two things. We'll explain uh, maybe what tr what triggered means for anybody that doesn't know. We'll go, there'll be some versions of it, but but triggered is is typically something that pushes your button is another way to put it. Right. Something that sets you off, and you almost can go into an unconscious state where you're not even thinking about it. Just it flips that switch and off you go, and you're in a very small box and you're moving along a track that's uh, usually fueled by. Well, for the most part, fueled by anger a lot, or rage, or outrage, or for others, it could be depression, right, and recoil. So uh, we're going to try to bring some attention to what that is. And as a second layer, like Dr. Vibe said, let me explain what a drama triangle is. So if everyone's got the, everyone's got a Wikipedia ability to reach, also look it up. It's called a drama triangle. And once you know how how we get trapped in these triangles, you're gonna see this played out in your families in every single movie or drama or situation that you ever see. And it goes like this. Uh, many times we'll find ourselves trapped in one of three roles, meaning perhaps we're feeling victimized. And so when we feel victimized, we're looking at someone who's a persecutor, right? Somebody's given us a hard time. So we feel victimized. We have a persecutor. Now, a third person usually somewhere in there appears. It's a rescuer, right? So the victim often will look to a rescuer to take sides against a perpetrator, right? So you'll see that all the time, right? How many times have you seen, here's the victim and here's, you know, the rescuer, right? The lawyer, the, the do-gooder that comes in because they got extra muscle or, it's, or it could be a judge or, a you know, someone that comes in that sympathizes with the victim side Tag the perpetrator. Okay, that's one of many scenarios. Now, many times the perpetrator feels victimized by, say, the victim who is playing victim, uh, falsely accusing them, right? And so they believe they're the victim, and so they lash back to the to the uh, to, to try to get allies and lash back to what they perceive as the persecutor. And what you'll find in our lives is many times we'll find ourselves in different roles. So if anybody starts complaining to you about somebody in their life, realize you're being solicited to be enrolled into taking their side against the perpetrator, those guys, that person, right? If ever you feel being put upon and attacked upon, there's going to be a part of you that feels victimized, even though they're saying you're the attacker, right? And you might turn around and lunge back. So to be aware of this, it's, it's very insidious in that once you get in that triangle, many family systems run this way. If you're looking to your own families and uh, <clears throat> I say it's a part of every plot of television. Once you understand it and you can actually see it, there's only one position you can possibly take to get you out. And that's called the observer. So you're removed from that triangle and you can see what's happening. Now, many times if you're in one of these triangles and you become the observer, you're the ultimate bad guy because you won't side with the victim, you won't help the persecutor, get, and, and you won't be a rescuer. So sometimes you're the worst person of all because you're saying basically, I don't want any part of this. I'm out, right? And if this is in a family system, look out. So as we talk about being triggered, Think to yourself and we'll see if we can revisit this idea of where are you at in the drama triangle, right? Are you the victim? Are you the rescuer, right? Or are you the persecutor that thinks that you're the victim? And are you stuck? And what is it about your trigger? What is it that first flips your switch? So men, I'm gonna ask you not to have to say, maybe speak to a specific situation because that, that's where we can all start to take sides. Have you been triggered lately is the question, right? Have you been triggered? And um, what does it say about you that you can get triggered right now? I'd like to start there with our first question at night. What does it say about you that with all the work you've done and as sophisticated and as smart and as educated and as much work as you've done, you still get triggered? What's that say about you? Robert, have you been triggered this last year? I, I, think, I, I think I have been on, on occasion. <laughs> and I'm certainly joking. Like, at it. like you said, <laughs> when have you not been triggered? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think I did, did live in a state of, of um, 
continuous trigger perpetual uh, trigger, trigger. <laughs> yeah yeah right but uh yeah certainly have been in that state uh glenn and um uh, when feeling when accused or um feeling that it can be made responsible for things that weren't my fault right. um that would that was one of the big ones and uh, or and i think i've had played all the roles in that triggering triangle of being you know the the persecutor the the, the one the victim and what is the what is the uh, the, res the, the rescuer the rescuer yeah yeah, you, yeah. Uh, but i think that was my primary role in, in childhood um so mm. yeah so there was there was plenty of opportunity to play all unconsciously play all those roles and you know think you were doing the right thing and dr vibe you've been triggered this last year by events or circumstances uh, you know, it's interesting, not too much, but what I will say that the person, the, the corner of the triangle, I'm most often is the rescuer. Yeah. And I find it very interesting. And is it easy for men to get out of the triangle? Because by nature, men want to be in, most men want to be involved, right? They don't want to be, being an outsider is not easy for a lot of men, but these days, I'm getting more and more of an outsider, but when I'm in the triangle, the corner that I'm in most often is rescuing trigger. I, when I, when I got triggered, that's how I got this. All right. <laughs> that's how I got that. So I don't, I don't get triggered any much anymore because I've just, because I know it's not good for me and it's not good for those around me when I'm triggered. We're going to we're going to get to get to uh, how do you know when you're triggered and what's the sequence of events, because this is also to be revealing to those when you are triggered, you know, uh, to maybe help those that are listening to get an understanding of this and so realize there's no right or wrong here. It's the idea is, are you do you have the ability to observe to understand yourself and to, to know when you're triggered to say maybe it's time to shut down for a little while right. And reconsider what you might do next if you can catch it in time so glenn let me just add a, an additional question trigger like when people think of trigger they probably think of an aggressive emotion but can trigger be also a regressive emotion so say for example i get triggered by something it doesn't make me go into the uh, the situation it makes me pull away Perfect example, the drama triangle. So for instance, somebody can push your buttons and you retreat. You feel like a victim. You don't have, right? You don't have the uh, the wherewithal or the weaponry, right? To say, whoa, or you don't even really know because it's a system that has gotten to you when you were a kid, right? So it hits you under your awareness, you fold, right? Instead of push back. So that's when you drop into the victim mode of the drama triangle. Perfect example. You feel like you're being victimized you're triggered, yes. You're triggered into a, into a passive part of the triangle that makes you feel like a victim, right? Versus being triggered into anger, now you become a persecutor, right? Or like you men both said, you know you're being triggered, but you're showing up in the rescuer part of the triangle. You, you want to you want to come to the rescue because you get it. You're far enough removed, but you're still emotionally in, enwrapped in the process, right? It's kind of a go-to mode for a lot of us in the uh, healing arts. Right, right. Uh, those that hold of us that hold, you know, space for others. Right. We so sympathize. Go into that. So yeah. Let me just interrupt just for a second. Are any other men that are on here in the room? Do you want to? Are you? Are you just listening, or or have you been triggered, or in the last year? And if you give an example of being triggered, I see we have Rod here, we have Mick, we have Lee. Um, anything that triggered you in the last year? The last year. How about the last day? Okay. <laughs> um, Go for absolutely, it. Absolutely. Um, I never join these calls, but when I saw uh, the advertisement come out about being triggered, I knew that I should jump on it. Um, ego uh, triggers. Oh, I think, I think you froze up there for a second. Froze right? up. Yeah, he's I got. Oh. Sorry complacency and when I'm challenged it triggers me right away and uh, I've been dealing with that for the last few days so uh, this is the perfect opportunity okay Mick or Lee do you want to add in or I get triggered uh, this is all new to me like this formality but uh, 
like uh, at work, uh, there's someone that's above me. I have, well, they aren't really above me, but they have more control. When they, when they screw up, I'm the one that is um, affected by it. It happens, um, well, they're incompetent. And so it happens on a regular basis. Now, I, in this triangle, I, don't, I guess I'm the victim. Um, and my thing is, I know this, but what, why, when it happens, does it still trigger me? That's why I'm here. I'm trying to understand, which I think we're supposed to get to later, is why does that happen? I know, I see the person, I see what they do, I see how it affects me, I still get triggered. <laughs> you know, and, and so I'm hoping that there's some tools there, even though I'm totally aware of this situation. Right. It's still, um, yeah. it's, it's perplexing. Good. Thank you for, thank you for that openness. Lee, anything at all? Yeah. You know, I, I'm finding I play um, all three roles at work, which I've never looked at it like that before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it's coming from above me, I'll, uh, you know, I may not be as expressive and I'll be, uh, I'll withhold and then I'll look for agreement for some other place. You know, this is what's happening. This is what's new to me. And I'll make that right. person above me, the persecutor. Um, if it's, if it's somebody that works for me or somebody at a lower level than me, you know, I'll be the, uh, the, I forgot what you called it, but the hero, the, uh, rescuer. 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 Um, and, um, uh, you know, I'm sh there are times when I'll misinterpret a situation and I'm thinking I'm right and uh, I'll be the persecutor as well. Right. So that's the story you make up in your head. And we're going to get to that. What sets off? What gets you on that cascade to say you're already reading into the situation? It's like, I know this is coming. I can feel it coming at me. And you're already prepared. And you're that is the internal piece. Right. That's preset. That says, I can smell it coming, and you're already like setting up your whole system to become either the rescuer or the victim, right? Or to, be, or to suppress your anger. So, what does, thank you, everybody. First of all, thank you. So that, you know, if everybody on the call can see a little bit of this, it might help you. That's awareness number one. Do you know that you get triggered? Do you know that you're probably end up in one of these three roles, either as the victim, because, wow, look what's being done to me. Rah! Right. Or, oh, my God, you know, here it comes again. You know, the, here comes the knife or the, the, the arrow right coming at me again. And so you recoil or you're fighting back and realize uh, when, you, when you're doing something, you may be uh, perceived as a persecutor. Right. By because of your authority or or, or something. And that victim is going to be looking for allies to talk about you and get someone on their side. Right. And. Um, if the victim gets mad enough, they're going to fight back, and now they're going to be perceived as the persecutor. So that's how the dance goes, right? So if you get a victim quartered in the, uh, far enough, then they lash back. Now all of a sudden, they're the bad guy, and the persecutor goes, what? I'm doing my job. Right. Yeah, what's up with you? You're, you're thin-skinned, yeah. and you're easily offended? Grow up. You know, oh, 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 maybe he's right, maybe he's not. Right? And it goes on, it goes on, it goes on, right? Round and round and round. So I was going to go to this piece. So what does it say about you that you get triggered and it's something that you can't, um, well, I'm no exception either. So we're not talking from a place of, hey, I'm exempt. I am not. Uh, so what's it say about you, Robert, that you get, uh, that you still get triggered? Well, well, I think, you know, from this perspective now, I can say it just means that you're human. You know that uh, there's no. There's I no should have picked you last. You're too good. <laughs> should have picked well, you I could say last. that in, in back in the day that it just felt like you know there was something wrong with you. You know there was either some kind of weakness or some lack of intelligence or you know just you you were not functioning at a at a high level because you you are triggered by this stuff and you're so and you're vulnerable to it too. So this, this is a, it implied implied a weakness. Yeah, it's childlike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's infant. It's infantile. And there yeah. might be there might be some. Might be some basis on that too. Yeah, uh, Doctor Vibe, when you get triggered and you step or you stepped over the line, or you feel it, and it's in your gut, and maybe you swallowed it down. Maybe you're composed enough to to not let it get out. Yeah, but it's still right. Gets in your gut. What does that say about you? It's still, I guess, part of it's I'm human, but part of it still need. It says I need to grow. There's still room for growth, and that, well. At the best of times, we can 
how can I say it? The, the, we're never in total control of our emotions and it's time, time for more growth. And I have to say, what are the triggers and where can I avoid it the next time? So I look at what's happened and say, what can I be preventing from this trigger to happen again? It will happen again. Yeah. It will, but I don't want it to be as frequent. It's a learning point. It's a learning lesson for me. It's an opportunity to be better. And you, and you, the other man, when you join in, say yes. If if you didn't know this little piece about the cognitive piece of it, you know, when you're back in that lousy space again, what's what's the story you make up about you, right? What goes on in your head? What are you saying? God, that still makes me mad. It still makes me mad. That stuff still makes me embarrassed. That stuff, I get small in that situation, right? What do you say to yourself? Anybody else have a comment? Can you connect yeah, with not, that piece? I'm not good enough. You know, there you go. I'm not. Ma I don't have. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't have these. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anybody yeah. else? Well, you at home, you think about this, right? Because there's a. Whenever these kind of things happen, you're affirming. Mm -hmm. You're affirming something about yourself that you believe is true. Like there's Robert some says. shame involved in that. Th yeah. There certainly is, especially if you're under attack and you fold, right? Yeah. Or yeah. you get you get so scared that you get over aggressive, right. you know. I don't know about you, I start getting aggressive. I but yeah, me too. Wow, you know, yeah. blinders goes out. You know, you could be a very dangerous man, right? Yep. Yeah, you're so, fighting so, for your. It feels like you're fighting for your life. Yeah, certainly can. So what it can say about you, also, what I mean by that, then is realize there's a reinforcement mechanism, right? That that says, this is my go-to place beyond all that wonderful logic and all that grown up talk and all right. that great space you can hold under normal conditions, you get pushed. Guess what? There is a more primal, primitive, or in some ways, infantile place, right? That reacts just like that, right? And says, either I'm gonna, it's fight or flight or, fee or freeze. Yeah. So you can't, right? There is. So what's that about? So, What's at risk for this, guys? So let's do that. What, what's at risk when you're in this state? Uh, Robert, yeah. you know, Robert, you're last. No, no, you're, too, <laughs> you're, you're last. You spoil okay. it for everybody. <laughs> and that might be triggering you right now. <laughs> I'll, okay. I'll put, you know what? Let, let, let me push it to Lee. <laughs> Lee hasn't spoken I'll for I'll... a bit. Oh, okay. What's at risk? What's at risk for you to, when you're triggered? What's at what? risk? Whether I'm or, right or, 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 to preach, or to pretend you're not. <laughs> so go ahead, Mick. Go ahead. No, Mick. What's at risk is whether I'm right or wrong in the situation. That's what's at risk. Uh, to me, um, I expect um, more from myself, but in the situation, uh, maybe I'm, I just feel like I need to be right. Even if I am right, it triggers me. <laughs> that I, I maybe it triggers me because I have to I have to deal with this a lot of it has to do with me I, I'm kind of trying to fit my situation in here but uh it I think it has something to do with um well it has to do with ir irrational thought and I'm not saying that it's mine that's a real trigger for me when somebody comes and at me with irrational thought and this is one-on-one -on -one. i'm not talking about the world because that's a whole other thing sure. but and that's a rash there's a lot of irrational action out there but my mind it's hard for me when somebody is speaking to me and everything they're saying is it doesn't make any rational sense that triggers something in me i actually yeah, i get pissed off mm -hmm. uh when there you that go happens. there you go so maybe this is a good example and if you meant okay i had other ways to poke around this but I'll ask Mick, is it okay to use this as an example and, and to work on this a little bit? We don't, you're not going to give no names. We're just going to give the example of some, something comes into your world that seems absolutely irrational and then something happens, right? You're well, okay. You, you, yeah, sure. You're okay with this? Are you? You're comfortable sure, enough? Fine. All yeah, right. I'm All right. Good. So if you can't just think of that scenario, right? You're in a situation where somehow you're locked into some kind of conversation uh, with an individual and what they're saying is totally irrational bs to the core 
and what's the first thing that happens to you? What's the, can you, uh, you I'm gonna put, I'm gonna give you a clue. You're gonna make a judgment call right away, right? It's the first thing you're gonna sure. make a judgment. Would you say yeah. that? Right. So tell sure. me, tell me about that judgment. So you can almost feel it coming. Someone starts bad, 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 right? And it probably takes you what? Three seconds to start that's, to make. <laughs> that's a long time. That's a long time. That's a long time. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the way they walk up, you're already, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. right? Right? Yeah. Right? Sure. What? You can smell what? it. Yeah, right? So um, tell me some of those signals. What is it that you start to perceive this? You start to go, you know, my gut's still it, right. yeah, I can well, smell it coming. Come on. Uh, let me have it. it uh, in myself, I just, I just feel, I just feel, I, I, I'm triggered. I just feel it. It just comes up in me, and I cannot suppress it. That's the thing. It happens. We're gonna, we're gonna slow that down. There's a story you make up. So I'm walking up to you, going, "Hey, man, hey, how you doing?" There, I'll tell you a story. You know, let me tell you about this thing here. You know, already you're going right. Your bullshit meter is going off, right? And you're like, "What's the first? What? What? What's the first thing?" Do you Here's what I'm trying well, to get to, everybody, because if you can catch yourself before you go over that switch. That's right? what I'd like. That's what we'd all like. And that's, <laughs> that's, that is what we're going to try to get to today. So everyone's going to figure out where their switch is, because if you can get there before the switch, you might be able to change the pattern, because once that switch is thrown, the light is on. Yeah. And game is on. And you're rolling. Right? Right? So now, let's make some exceptions, right? There is real righteous indignation, right? A place to get you get triggered because it's just morally to you uh, offensive. And maybe you're playing rescuer and stuff and you go, hey, this stops now, right? The problem, the question is, do you have it or does it have you? That's the difference. If you call upon your warrior to say, I'm, I'm stepping into this. This stops now. I will not be spoken to that way. This will not happen, right? To this young person here, this stops. You know, you're kicking your dog. Hey, enough. You know, that kind of language, that kind of abuse. Not in my presence. We're going to have big trouble. This stops now. You are calling that up from a place of righteous indignation, right? Rather than an unconscious trigger, although it may be almost as fast, but are you making the difference? Do you make, do you understand the difference what I'm saying in my, yeah. to you now? The difference to call up a warrior, right? Or to call up a, a, a magician or some kind of problem solving because I'll say from a higher power situation, right? You feel compelled to insert yourself, mm -hmm. but it's not because your emotions have taken you over and you're not in control anymore. So I know it's a little nuanced, but I know the men that have been in the work for a while will understand me, right, Robert? Yeah, absolutely. Right, you understand yeah. the difference. But that's what we're trying to get, men. It's one thing to step into a situation. You go, wait a minute, boss. I understand you're mad. Can I see you in your office, please? You could be triggered, but it doesn't have you. You have it. You're going to call up your warrior. You're going to call up your dignity. And you can say, I'd like to have five minutes with you, please. Sir, understand. I respect and, your authority. You know, let me, I, I want to just interrupt. How fine of a line is it between it having you or you having it? Is that a fine line for some people? It is for me. It's a razor thin, man. Razor thin. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think it's so important. We'll get to this before this uh, is over. So maybe we can all understand where that trigger point is. Because I can be feel morally outraged, right? And I'll write this email that I'm going to, I'm going to pummel somebody. You know, I've got my mm -hmm. keyboard vigilante self on, you know, and I, you know, I'm going to, I know how to cut. Okay. I know how to cut. So I'm going to, but I realize, I'll explain my triggers later, that I'm triggered and I'll wait. I'll wait. Next morning, whew, I'm glad I didn't send that. Yeah. The next morning, I'm glad I didn't send that. Yeah. Although in the moment, man, <laughs> you know. So how much does this relate to when people say, I did things in the heat of the moment? Because, and I'll give you uh, some context on this. I remember many years ago, I used to run a baseball league and like things got too aggressive at times and there'd be fights. And I'd so often hear from men, 
or was in the I did because it was in the heat of the moment. I don't need to monopolize this. Robert's got uh, as much or more experience in these arenas than I do. Robert, you want to take this one? The heat, yeah. of, the, the heat of the moment. What takes yeah. over? No, I, I think it. I think that is very much what you were talking about, Glenn. That, that, that sometimes those things are the result of something that you, you, you. And I think, and I think men feel justified in taking on those in the heat of the moment things. That feels like a right place to be. So there's there's a certain amount of that involved too that I think may even override your 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 rational sense of reason, because that's what men do, you know we 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 take righteous causes and we stand up for them and so the you, you may you may just go to automa automatically do that whether it's right or wrong, and mm -hmm. if you're a man who's accustomed to doing that and one of the things I wanted to to interject also was that that idea of the rescuer also the hero, is another title for that that uh that persona that comes up and it's fun it's a, it's a persona that for men we feel honorable in that perspective so that it is an additional reinforcement that we are right it's not always okay. true that we are but i think that's what what comes along with the territory sometimes too so you know you really need to be discerning about whether you are or not and I think it requires this kind of discussion and understanding in order to become that, to have that discernment and control to really reason, am I, is this a heroic act? Is this a rescuing act? Or is this just me justifying my own ego? So I think that's the kind of discernment that, that uh, Glenn is, is talking about too. And it's a practice. And you have to be able to step aside and analyze this and not just rush right into it. Like Glenn said, take a day and see how that feels the next day. <laughs> now, let's let's not glaze over what I think, but what uh, is an injustice to a lot of men's conversations. The juicy, wonderful uh, power of of letting your shadow take over. Let me ask you this: Anybody watch one of those uh, instant karma videos where the guy goes to kick the dog and he slips and he doesn't kick the dog, he falls on his ass? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, right. Are there are the smart aleck punk who's in the boxing ring who thinks he's all that, and, and some some humble contender comes in and two hits and puts the guy right on his back. Down. Yeah, right. Isn't there a part of you that goes, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, right? So there's some there's some satisfaction and joy, right, around finally smacking that bully down. Right. Anybody ever been pushed around and bullied? Right. Yeah. Say, yeah, I was triggered. Yeah in the heat of the moment, but man, I wouldn't have given up that moment for anything, right? And I'm gonna regret it, and I'm gonna do a bunch of trouble, but boy, there, there's something visceral about saying, wham! You know? Justifiable anger. Yeah, you got yours, buddy, right? And so let's not ignore that fact that that has a great utility, right? And that's, yeah. that's in all of us. And maybe, just maybe, part of our trigger system is that rage that gets loaded behind that little tiny event, right? Yeah. Right, there's a pent up, right? I have it, do yeah, you? It's looking for an outlet. Yeah, give me a reason to be offended, come yeah. on. Yeah. Give me a reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. right? Yeah. I'm looking yeah. for it. Right. Anybody, anybody ever go on Twitter or Facebook looking for a reason to get upset? Yeah. I did, yeah. come Absolutely. on, Absolutely. and I found it, I found it. Uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course we did. So let's not ignore that, man, that we have. Uh, there's other factors involved here. And so what we're trying to do is own the fact that, yeah, we could be very dangerous men. Right. But the only thing that might make us different from the guy who winds up in jail or doing something horrific is that we were dangerous and we know it. Let's, it's OK to be dangerous, but let's be dangerous and let's know how dangerous we can be and look. Like I said, there's a righteous time. You know, somebody's mugging an old lady, right? And I can stop that, you know? Right. I'm going in, Yeah. right? Some kids hanging out of a burning building. I'm gonna to try to catch them. You know, it's gonna seem stupid. I might break my neck. I'm getting to be an old guy, but guess what? Yeah, hero, call it what you want. Right, there's, right? There's, there's something, you can say maybe it's in manhood and I'm okay with that, right? But also know it when you're also doing it because you don't know it because yeah. right because you're so loaded up and you're just looking for that reason to squeeze that trigger anybody come on make a move right right right, right. 
So how are we doing on time? And anybody else want to comment on that? I've been monopolizing on all of this. Give me some observations. You see this in yourself. You see how this can, unconscious can, can really wreak some havoc in the world. And do you see it in the world? Let me hear some, let me hear some from the men. Come on, Rod, what do you got to say? Mick? Come on, Rod, jump in. Yeah, my apologies. My connection has been intermittent. And so I've been dealing with trying to get back on. Uh, I deal with it all the time. I just absolutely dressed down one of my coworkers, not coworkers, he's an underling. And um, it was all based on my ego and all based on everything that you gentlemen are talking about and bringing to the forefront. And um, it's incredibly dangerous for me. Uh, in this area and that's why i'm listening more than i'm contributing because i have a lot of areas where i can hear the truth here and um yeah, yeah. and uh i don't want to profess to say that i know how to deal with it yet even though i've done thank you some of the work yeah but i really want to understand why i still get triggered at 53 years of age and you know i understand my ego plays a part in it and i just said to my wife who's in toronto and i'm 500 miles away i'm on a phone call about men who are triggered and she said and the women who want to pull the trigger on them <laughs> and i thought wow this is the perfect place for me to be <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good one man that's a whole other conversation oh yeah well she's thrilling as well as i am but uh yeah we, we, well that's good we, that's we good understand yeah. yeah. Our, well, tell her you're our next. You're lucky. You're a lucky man. I uh, know. We're going to say our yeah. next our next conversation, Rod. You're going to say she can come on because we're going to talk about pushing buttons. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Might as well Fair bring, bring in the pros. Uh oh. Bring in the pros Carmen, that Car one. oh, hold on. Carmen is ready. Carmen, I know you. Bring, have bring in the professionals. Say. I, Carmen, I know you're keep no Carmen. It's not like you to keep quiet. Come on now, Carmen. No, no, I, I, I was saying, should I come out of picture mode just to smile, and then I'll go back into picture mode? <laughs> <laughs> she gets it. She gets it. So, Otherwise, she I wouldn't totally come get on. it. We, I mean, we all have our triggers. Yeah. The whole point is to ride the wave, and not learn to, and not the ride the wave to ride us, right? And to give each other space when that happens, and not, and to hold that for each other. Well, you so, give your, and you give yourself some space. So, uh, right. But I mean, right. in conversation with men and women, when we're in it and we're triggered, yeah. we have to, you know, say, Ooh. hey, I think I need to take a step back. Well, Carmen, you know, if there's something, there's something, and, and Glenn alluded to it, there is something so seductive about those roles and those kinds of conversations. To be right and to be righteous is almost as good as sex. And when you get that opportunity to do it, it's you, you're in it before you realize it, you know. And I, and I think it takes a lot of training to really be able to step back in that in that triggering moment because it's it is like it's a hair trigger, and once it's triggered, you're in. Yeah, you know, the yeah. choice is gone. You know, exactly. So exactly. It is very seductive. Mr. Rosen, Mr. Rosen, you got something on your mind? Talk to me. Talk to us. Yeah, I'm going to go back to what uh, Glenn was talking about earlier about the, I forget what you called it, but you know, what, uh, what was underneath it or something like that. But, you know, I, I, I didn't get what you're saying when you're talking about it, but um, when you like take your example of reading emails, you know, I'll read an email and the thing, especially when it's at work, it does, I don't think it shows up too much else. But mostly at work, it's like they're out to get me. Is the little noise that's, that's talking. So I'll read an email at, at night, and I'll pound on the keyboard, and I'll know because I've done it enough times. That I'll just let this sit, and I'll reread the email in the morning, and it didn't say anything. Right. It wasn't like that. Was what I saw was all made up based on whatever that uh, noise was the way it was looking at the email when I was just a little bit tired and um, it was more activated. Lee, that's temporary, wonderful. Temporary insanity. Well, it's a story you make up and it's a very compelling wow. story. You see some, I've done, Lee, very much the same thing. It's, it's, it's from someone and I read it one way and I'm like, what the, yeah, and I bang, bang, bang. And right, the next morning, that's not what they said. Yeah, when some, you had some blinders go on or something. You just shut down and it gets narrow and it gets, you know, focus and you just see what you want to see. It's like, 
what? Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. So what is that? So, Go ahead, Mick. Mick. Well, I was just saying, so what is that when you hear something and it triggers you? Um, where where do you find the buffer zone between the trigger and the reaction? Because that's why I'm here. That's what I'm looking for. You know, and this is not like uh, one, one gentleman said, you know, somebody comes up. This is can be the same person. And I, I, I like this person. I don't dislike this person. We don't have this. But occasionally this thing happens and I react and I trying to find that's why not that you ever get an answer in an hour, but I'm looking for clues on how not. I mean, I can feel it, but before I can say I feel it, I open my mouth and I, my voice goes up. I raise my voice and that's kind of how I do it. But I want to stop before I get there because this isn't with a person that I dislike. It's just that these moments uh, come up. And so I'm looking for a way because I, I, after it's over, I'm like, I knew that was coming. Yeah. But I can't, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how to catch it. Okay, so we could take a lot of time in this because each individual, yeah. each individual has their, um, uh, uh, their backstory as to what specific things get them triggered. But the common thing is the trigger. So I'd say, actually, uh, you might want to get with Robert because we can, what I'd like to move to now, because we're already short on time is, when do you know What's the setup? When do you know when you're going to get triggered? And so you can find that trigger point. Now, to get to the root of the trigger, it's usually, there's an, been an injustice somewhere in your life. And either a person who is very similar to that, or you're perceiving yourself in the same situation, it's either preemptive or reactive to something that you're projecting into the situation. And if you want to back that into a personal experience, you got to get with somebody like Robert, who can unpack your life for you and say, where does that come from? right to try to resolve why you always see people of this kind or this energy or this type or when you're in a situation uh, it's it's a it's a number of circumstances that set up the blocks right that that make you vulnerable so that's a more complex and 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 individualized way to do it so if you're all agreeing i'd like to move to try to recognize do you know when you're triggered and what's the very first sign that you might be able to recognize so you can avert it. I'll start with me as an example. I struggled with this for years. I, I, I realized I was, I was given some great responsibilities to run a men's organization and I was doing a great job, but I was always, I was always angry. It was like I needed to have a, a foe, right? a foil at all, at all times. Um, and it was getting old, right? It was time, come on, I'm a grown man. And I found that certain things emerge in my leadership that really don't occur in my everyday life. So many of you might find that this could be at work or in a leadership role or a greater responsibility or you're subservient to someone from above uh, it's, or maybe a, in, in, a, in a sexual or personal relationship where you're giving up a certain part of you that in any other circumstance would be unscathed. You say, what? What's the big deal, right? But in these particular circumstances, you're vulnerable. So my situation was, um, I did some work on this. And, and I don't think there is actually a piece of work. You know, Robert, I think you could probably develop a great piece of work around this to say, how do you know the first signs of your triggers? Mm -hmm. So I'll get to it. When I start to objectify the person or situation, look what that guy's doing. Look what they are doing. If I get past the point, if I don't stop it there, I'm a goner. I'm on the slippery slope. I'm going down the water slide, right? If I can catch myself saying it, thinking it, writing it, or, you know, so if I can, here's the thing. If I can objectify the other person, I can kill them. They're a thing. They're not a person anymore, right? So I can go ahead, right? Let them have it, right? Because they're no longer a person. So that was my trigger. If I start saying, you guys, them people, here we go again. I've, I could catch that. If I can catch that, that means stop. Maybe write what you got to write, but don't react right now. And boy, do I want to. Man, every part of my body's like. <laughs> stop. 
Um, right, stop now. And so mine is when I objectify, right? That's it. That's the first thing. If I can catch myself there, and that has now saved me many, many a regretful email and friendship <laughs> and friendship too, I should say. <laughs> so if you all can slow down a moment and think to yourself, what is the first piece of the story you make up that allows you to say, enemy, look out. Something, something has to start that first domino. What is it? Get to know it because that is your switch. You know, you know, I think one of the things that comes into play is that you remember that old axiom about count to 10 before you do anything, before you react. If you have the but, presence of mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but that, but that, I mean, the, the same kind of thing that you're, I think that you're saying, which is just to be able, if you can just put some time in between that feeling and the next moment. Well, do you, you know, it. do you know your moment, Robert? What is it? What is it that makes you, do you know what the trigger for you? I mean, do you know the sign of when you're just about the, that ten thousand dollar, you know, twenty ten thousand volt switch is just about to go? What is uh, what happens? What's what goes on in your head? What's the story you make up? What's the word you hear? What's the, what is it? Uh, you know, I feel like it's when I've been um, made wrong or belittled. Um, the, the story that I made up is that I, you know, I'm I'm right. I'm righteous in my action. Now, almost any action I take is forgivable and acceptable. And that's tremendously empowering when you're, you're like, you know, you're cut free and there's no responsibility now because you are, you're, you know, you're bringing the hammer of justice now. So you, that's that's the feeling that I have now. Now I've got that place. And it's sometimes I'll just navigate myself to that place. So it's, there's income, so right? So that, that I'm empowered, you know, now to do anything. You know, how do you recognize? Are off now. How do you how do you recognize when there's incoming? Right here comes that missile. How do you know it? How do you sense that that's coming and the next thing is not going to be fun? What do you sense? I, I think it's. Know? I think it's usually in situations like you were mentioning where I'm not in, empowered. I'm not the person in power in this situation. You know? So a power so differential. It's a, so it's already like that. Yeah, okay. it's already in that dynamic. Now it's just throwing fuel in the fire. You know, everything, everything that happens after that. And I'm, and in some ways I may even bait that because that, you know, it's fun. in some, <laughs> some ways feels like, well, it feels like it's empowering too. Yeah. And you know, now I'm just getting more justification for being right. When I come, you know, when I deliver the hammer, you know. Oh, it may, wow. You know, it, that's it, great. It, great. You know what I mean? So you just let it, yeah. let it come to you, you know, now it's, it, it's just continues to make you more right if that's possible. Oh, so you're almost like beating the situation. Come on. Yeah, I, yeah, I want yeah, exactly. this fight. Come on. I, I yeah. want this fight. You know, yeah, exactly. It's a fixed fight, you know. Uh, so, that, you know, that comes up most often in an authority uh, or perceived authority over perceived you. Perceived authority. Yeah. yeah. It's not even sometimes it's not even necessarily that. It could be somebody who has some emotional sway over you. You know, so it's that, not necessarily a job thing. You know, you could be vulnerable in a relationship. Right. Yes, right. Anywhere there's a power differential, yeah. and you're exactly. and you're perceiving that that you may be victimized or be put upon or or yeah, embarrassed exactly. or, or hurt or, hu or hurt, humiliated. Yeah, uh, right, right. Yeah. So, I, I just want to. And none of that is conscious. Right. None of it's conscious. Right. It's just but, about your right and and being angry. Obviously, feels stronger a lot of times too. So well, get sure. to the anger. You know. Right. right. Carmen, I want you to share. Come on, Carmen. You get why you just blow it. <clears throat> you you got. I know you have something of value to share. No, I just. I think this is a great conversation. I I love the fact that you guys are talking about this. This is wonderful. Um, <clears throat> you know, learning to not be led by our our pain or our past traumas or unresolved issues is everybody's work you know, and that's a beautiful thing. And I'm just, I'm impressed. I love seeing that you guys are talking about this. And all I said is when we can pause, when we find the wave of emotion, whatever it is come up, if we can pause in that moment and take a few deep breaths and just kind of come back into ourselves, then we can decide how to respond instead of fall into the reaction. I just wanted to add that, you know, it's just a beautiful tool. You know, I, go, I, go to your breath, go, go, you know, step back. 
I, I think that that's so accurate. What you said, Carmen, is absolutely true. But the thing I want to come back to, which it just strikes me again, how seductive this is when yes. you're in that state. Yes. You, you know, it, it feels powerful. It feels right. It feels absolute. And there, how many times do you feel like that in your life? Yeah. How many I, times? You, you don't. I, it's rare. So when you have that opportunity, you want to seize it by the throat and go mm-hmm. for it. Yeah. you know because there's a whole charge I, behind yeah, it you know I, how uh, seductive is the right word for that thing too that's why right. i think we get so caught up in it well i think we get caught up in it because we are not feeling power enough in other aspects of our lives when that window opens up it the ego goes oh hell yes i want to be right there because we got to get you back on track so yeah. when you can start saying hey where am i not really honoring me or where am i not empowering myself and you start that reflection and that process, then those emotions will not be so seductive. Yeah, I agree with you. But you know, it's kind of, it's, I'm realizing that you know, you're right, but what you're suggesting is work. And that's not quite as seductive as instant gratification. And that's what we're talking about here. We're yeah, talking about you. instant gratification. And that's why right? we go to that. That's why we go to it. Yeah. That's what, you know, yeah. the rest of the stuff is, yeah, I could go to psych- psychiatrists and I can do this and I can read a book and I can, <laughs> you know, I don't want to do that because this feels good. <laughs> this feels good. And it may be self-destructive in the end or right. destructive to relationship, right. but let's, it feels let's, really good. Let's go here too. There's something that doesn't get talked about much. And um, gosh, the time just flew by. And I want to get to everybody's- uh, we, got another t- we got about another 10 minutes, Glenn. Okay. So just realize there's a lot of, there's a lot of power in, be- in being the victim. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. There was a Absolutely. lot of power oh, yeah. with yeah. being the victim, playing the victim, and 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 bringing allies into your side. Uh, yeah. So, don't confuse. The moment that you see, the moment that you are either the victim, the persecutor, or the rescuer, which is a hero, you've actually fallen into the trap at that point. When the moment you identify with any three, and you're reacting from any three, you have already fallen into the trap. Oh, okay, Carmen, it's your turn. You're in this a conversation now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So what's yours? Welcome to the no, men's no. group. What's oh, your tr- come on. Well, yeah, what's your what's your trigger? What that's the price of admission. Come on. <laughs> well, what's my trigger? Oh, yeah. your stuff. Right. What kind of situation? Yeah, no, what's my trigger? My I no, I'm definitely, you know, I'm captain of the underdog. I see something unjust. I will definitely, you know. I've been right. known to get in the middle of men fighting and break it up. I mean, that's that not now, but in the mm-hmm. past, that was, and it's still, there are parts of it, you know, when somebody tries to take any authority over me in a way that's disempowering, it is definitely my trigger. Or perceived being disempowering, right? Correct, because perception is our reality. Yes. So what's the story you make up in your head? I get the rescuer bit. That's that's kind of this angel comes down. And that's that's, you know, a lot of us in the say the healing arts love that role. You know, we're real good facilitators. Right. Right. That, that, that's an easy hat to wear. Take it off. We're all three. We're the persecutor. We have to own all three. Own to your, be own, to transcend. Own we yours. are the persecutor, the rescuer and the hero. First person, Carmen. What's yours? Me? I'm all yeah. three. Tell me about tell me about. When do you actually get triggered? What actually happens? What's the circumstance where you go, either you either oh. you freeze or you fight or you fly? What, um, what happens? What happens? What's the situation? And how do you know? Yeah, when self righteousness is shown to me, I'm I don't handle that well. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely a trigger of mine. And another trigger would be um, complete. Um, yeah, lack of a, uh, availability to to walk in and work with something. You just walk away and not really give any feedback. You know that can be also a trigger. Okay. So you're, le- you're left to please. Not yeah. all the time, okay. though. You see, like you have to assess it, right? So it's it's people that you care about that you want to work things out. If they don't care about to work things out, then that's a trigger. But then you get through it and you go, okay, that's not switch, where they're at. Switch that to I. That's what yeah. I do. So when that's I'm around I people who don't feel comfortable to work things out, I've learned to go, okay, it's just not where they're at. It's not personal. But yet it still gets to you, right? Well, but- still can sometimes, especially when it's my ex-husband. <laughs> there you does go. That feel, does that feel like rejection when that happens? Is that what, what it is? Or- um, 
it feels a dishonoring. I don't, I don't think it's a rejection. It's a dishonoring, but that's really because I'm not honoring myself and my value. So right. it's about, about boundaries and maybe uh, betrayals and boundaries and things of that sort. Well, yeah, right? it's definitely a betrayal past story yeah. right, for sure. Right. So Mick, thank you, Carmen. Thank you. That's, it takes courage to, to move with, with a bunch of strangers. You're in a room, right? And we're talking about things that are our vulnerabilities, things that expose us. And thank you. So oh, no, I, I'm honored to be in this conversation. Really. Thank you. Great. Great. So Mick, it was kind of we focused this a bit on you. Do you have a greater understanding? And how about some questions from you? You have, you have some great minds and some great caring, intelligent people in this room. Mick, do you have a little bit of understanding of why you get triggered? You're saying you yeah, don't know I, why? Uh, what would well, you tell us now? What have you learned about you that might be helpful? Well, I, I realized that I hold myself to very high standards. It's just been the way it was the way I was raised. And I expect that from other people. Ooh. And that is and that is what happens uh, if I don't think you're you're coming up. You're not you're not. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. You're oh, not. Oh, you're there. You're, not, you're there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not doing the best you can is what I feel like. It's like you're capable of more. And so I that that's my trigger that you're not coming up with to that level of your ability and as i'm sitting here thinking i'm thinking that's not fair it's a trigger for me but it's really not fair to the other person right right because maybe you're a bit of a you don't know and i don't know you Mick, but maybe you got a bit of a perfectionist thing right maybe you're a not bit? holding <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're, we're right. We're right there. We're right there. <laughs> right against, right against I'm the, with you, Mick. Right against the shadow. Yeah, right. Oh. So you got a perfection and you're holding other people to unrealistic expectations. And yet, no matter what, it still gets you. You'd like to know why. What? Well, everybody, welcome to the work. I know we're just about it. Welcome to Thank the you. work, everybody. I think we might we have to do this about again. Dr. Yeah. We got to do, do this some more. Big subject. <laughs> Welcome to the work, everybody. And congratulations for you at home that have watched it. I hope you've learned a little something. Please, yeah, stay with us. We maybe we'll wind up doing some series like this. Men's Work 101 and Women's Work, I'm sure, right? This is not <laughs> universal. Absolutely. <laughs> got to have that energy. Well, for me, I'm <laughs> definitely got to add that in. <laughs> well, as we do our individual work, we become stronger within ourselves and with all our relationships. So then we become stronger together. Yeah, no question. Right. So it's an honor. Rod. Um, it's an honor to have you here, Carmen, again. Yeah, yeah. Rod, anything you want to add or any any sort of breakthroughs that you got through the conversation tonight? Yeah, absolute clarity Um, in a couple of things. I was raised in an environment where I was seen and not heard. So when I get triggered, I want to be heard and I'm going to be heard, God damn it, no matter what. And um, it showed up today and I'm at the highest echelon of where I work and I'm the top dog and I will shove it down your throat no matter what, because I will be right. And um, yeah, so I understand that. The fact that I still want to be right is going to take some work. <laughs> take some work. Welcome to the work. Welcome to the but work. There's, yeah, there's the understanding. So yes, uh, clarity well, I'm was- with you right on that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's my thing too. I got into authority and either I, either I got scared, then I got angry, then my tyrant comes online. Yep. And it's, I don't want your story. I don't want to hear about your problems. Exactly. Get it done or get out. Right. That's, right. That was the verb exactly what came out of my mouth tonight. Like you can be, <laughs> this is not a democracy. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's it. Yeah. Right. I, I, Those I are it. the words. <laughs> Exactly. Lee, I see <laughs> Lee, I, I see you smiling and nodding. What what's in what's going on in your mind? <laughs> yeah, Come on, Lee. Yeah. Those, the wheels are turning. He's he's Lee, going back in his life. No, I, well I got what I got I told you what I got for myself earlier. So I, I did get something for me, but you know, work with Rod in, in a different type of leadership position. And I've you know, I've never seen you display that type of work. And then, um, you know, in your career, it's different. Like it's different in my career. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's, you know, I'm smiling because I'm like, oh, I, I see two Rodneys right here. I'm getting to know both of you. <laughs> so, Glenn, Glenn, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Rod. Sorry. I'm no, no, I'm just saying there was a reason that this call triggered me to be on this call and uh exactly. you know uh and was advertised it i knew i had to be here so Thank uh, you. it was just it was just a surprise to see uh, rosen on the call and uh, and to have these experts <laughs> great so it's not what i was getting into but uh time well spent so thank you thank you yeah I, I honor you for the courage to be on the call right yeah not not, not an easy place to be on um, yeah for sure uh, glenn glenn any closing thoughts words that you'd like to add before we close it off for the evening yes because of anybody who stood through this thing and watched it and tuned in and listened to these things and are taking any kind of reflection at all that indicates to me that there's part of you that not only gets it but gets that you could be better and there's a part of you that wishes you can solve these kind of dilemmas and problems in a better way and you just don't have it yet but I think we've accomplished what we've set out to accomplish and that's to bring an awareness to this and that you're not alone. And uh, we, we, all, we all carry this piece with us to different degrees in different situations. So thank you for coming. Please join us again. Uh, we're calling this Men's Work 101, back to the basics. So I hope you enjoyed your evening. Thank you for inviting me on the program, Dr. Vibe. My pleasure. Robert, any final words? Well, it's hard to, it's hard to top um, Glenn's elegant wrap up there but um just to say that uh you know this is the work you're, you're watching it in progress to be vulnerable to be honest and to be able to share it with other people um on this call that's that is the work that we do and it, it's not a science it's a it's an art form and a practice yeah. so i invite everybody who's got something from this to continue to join uh, us on on dr Rive's calls thank you for being here well, it's our call. It's not my call, but it's our call. Yes, That's indeed. the way I look at it. And of course, I cannot. Carmen, do you have any closing thoughts or you're good? I'm, I'm good. It's just great to see you all then talking about this at this level. It's always great to witness. Thank you. It's great so to much. have you here too, Carmen. Yes, Carmen. Thank great. You. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, Lee, any closing thoughts or you're good? I'm good. All right. Fantastic. Nick, how about you? Uh, any closing thoughts? So. Good? Yeah, this time. It's great to have you here, man. Well, it's good to be here. This time it was just perfect. Today is actually what I needed. I hit kind of a crisis moment, and I'm like, I got to get past this. So this is this is really good. And thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. It's great to have you here, man. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, for everyone that was here live on the repeat, do not be strangers. Follow Men of Masculinity. Go to the website menofmasculinity.com, and. Uh, watch replays of conversations. And if any conversations you'd like us to address, please contact us. We'd like to have those important conversations. I'm Dr. Vibe. As I always like to say, live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get stronger, smaller to get stronger. Block assumptions and aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. And remember to give yourself grace. And thanks again to Robert, Lee, Terry, Michelle for another epic conversation. Keep in touch and keep safe. Good night, everybody. Peace.